Luke Cage. Luke Cage. Luke Cage. What's up, you guys? <sighs> yeah, it is uh, Wednesday. It was my day off. I chilled. I went to the gym. I went swimming. I flipped some knives in the backyard. Now I'm getting ready to do this interview with Casey Edwards. I hope everybody's doing all right. Is Casey on here? Let's see. Let's get him on here. The man behind this knife right here. Maybe he's around. He said he had to work. He was gonna run over and hop on here with us right after work. He said he might be a couple minutes late. So maybe that's what's going on, you know? We were listening to some Dinosaur Jr. at the beginning here. There he is, what's up, Casey? Let's get going. And it's been hanging. I've been chilling behind the shades, just having my uh, June shine kombucha. Why not? Waiting for you to show up. Hey, man. All right. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good. Let me get my thing. Yeah. There we go. I never set a camera up in here. Or my phone up in here. What's happening, man? Not much. Just uh, hanging out. It was my day off. I uh, went swimming, went to the gym, flipped some knives in my backyard. Right on. Some oh, hey. Oh, no <laughs> way. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that is so picture. classic. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Jim knows what. He's a good guy. I was like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I'll just wear this. I'm like, I don't, I'm, whatever. I'll just wear his sweatshirt. Well, I was working out in this thing earlier. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, fuck it, it's fine. Who cares? I don't know if you can call what I do working out. It's like fumble around the gym and then fall in the pool. I mean, you're at the gym, so it counts. Yeah, there's, yeah. Um. Anyways, how you doing today? You're all good? I'm doing good. I just got off work. I you know, this is my shop, like family business. And so I just come downstairs and I'm like, oh shit, I got to hurry. And I was like, I didn't even ask him, like, is this on, is this on Instagram? I'm like, I assumed it was on Instagram. I haven't, I haven't been on Instagram much or as much as I usually yeah, am. Yeah, this is a, uh, I do most of my stuff on Instagram just because it's easy enough I for me. I have it all in one spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I try and branch out here and there, but most of my promoting and hanging out and having fun is done on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, cool. So, so you're at your family's shop? Yeah, so this is my family business. We do like event rentals in Portland and we are lucky enough, like I had a basement already. And so like when I did the, the first like turbo and stuff, it was, you know, I already had an old drill press. I already had an old bandsaw and I had a uh, piece of shit old sand. That was how I built like, like the first, I think the first like five or six I built were just like the old tools we had lying around here. And then I think, I think, I think the first thing I bought was a drill press. And then after that, I got a, a I got a banta and then I got a sander and I knew like less than nothing. So I bought, I bought, like, I say less than nothing because I bought the wrong kind of sander. I bought a six by 48. I was like, Oh yeah. You know, blades are like six inch. I want a long sand, not a skinny, you know, two by 72. That's stupid. I want a big. So anyway, I got the wrong sander, but it ended up working out really well because every single turbones and every PDN I did on all these tools that I 
have had forever now. Wow. Okay. That's cool. Interesting. Yeah, super lucky. I mean, because like, like uh, this lathe here uses some goofy big ass fucking plug, and one of the mills over there uses another big ass plug. And if I was at home, it it wouldn't have worked out. So I I really lucked out there. Where? So you're in Portland. Yeah. Oregon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like I lived up there for a little bit. Did we talk it, about that? No, I, I didn't know you lived. There. It used to be. I mean, so when did you live up here? Well, that was about 10 years ago. So it would have been nice then. It still would have been nice. Right. Yeah, it, it's nasty now. Shit, we just got broken into uh, last, I think it was a week ago. They 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 cut the locks and they, on our front door and they came into our building. My dad, my dad was just in the shop and he forgot to hit the alarm on his way out. So for the first time they break in and my dad forgot to reset the alarm. So they came in and stole an empty till and uh, an old socket set. And right next to that was this box that had all my psycho parts in it and my other bare bones and some Timascus and a whole bunch of water jet parts. They left this, but they stole an empty cash register. Oh, my God. Man. Uh, yeah. yeah. Portland's not as pretty as it used. It used to be really cool over here. Are you more in the city or? We're on the out. So I'm in Southwest. So I'm up in the hills. So I'm just. Well, not really in the hills, like at the start of it. So I'm in between like the hills and the city. So luckily okay. I, it took a little bit to get up here, all the crime and, and bullshit and stuff, but it's, it's, ma it's made its way up here. Now they like to break. They actually, they broke in here and they stole, um, they stole a bunch of blades uh, and they left a bunch. I know they're not knife guys because they left all the titanium stuff alone and stole a bunch of broken bare bones blades and um, outcast blades and things that, weren't worth much they left all the titanium and proprietary stuff wow i guess that was nice of them <laughs> yeah uh, it could have been it could have been a lot worse but i was like oh i'll keep my stuff upstairs now where there's an alarm and uh, that didn't stop me either but how old man, are you I'm, I'm 30 30 okay cool and how long have you been uh making knives now making them uh i started making them it was right after the very first BRS selects dropped. I think it was the first, the red, blue, and orange ones. Like that was when I got in was a little bit before that. And I started making stuff. I think it was, I think it was new year's of 2018 or okay. 20, like four or five years, something like that. All right. Um, and, uh, do you, and do you flip yourself? Did you get into it through flipping? Yeah, I got, uh, so when I was, I think I was like 13 or 14, my dad took me to Northwest Armory, which is like a gun store here in Portland. And he was me and a, uh, my brother, we went there and we saw butterfly knives and we had seen them, I think it was in like Face Off or something. You know, he right. gives her a Chris knife and, this is Chris, but he gives her like a Chris, I don't know if it's some trade or whatever the hell it is, some knockoff right. thing. He gives it to her and I was like, that's so cool. And I remember we found them at Northwest Armory and they had a 42. And it was right when they released the 51. And I was like, oh, I don't want the 42. I want the 51. You know, I want the black one because I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Right. And so my dad's like, oh, well, give me two of those because he thought it said that they were like $25. And then he gets the thing at the end and they're $250. Oh, my um, God. But yeah, that was the, he was like, oh, whatever, we'll get them anyway. And so we bought them. And that was like the first real, like, you know, nice knife that I ever had was, was, a, was a 51 way back when. And then right. I, I kind of fell out of them for a while. Uh, and then, I don't know what it was. Like, it was like, yeah, six years ago or something. I bought a TAC-3, and it was when they had the LMAX TAC-3s. And I remember, I loved, like, that was the first time I ever, like, liked the steel. Uh, I never really cared about steel before then. And right. I don't know, it just it held up really well. And even though, like, those don't flip very good, I didn't know any better. And so I, I liked them. Right. So I, I flipped that for, like, a year. And then, like, I, I don't know how I got into the BRS stuff, but, like, I saw that first set of selects dropping and I was like, Oh cool. I want to get a green one. And I was in there and I remember it was like nine o'clock they were dropping them and at nine Oh two or something, I hadn't set up an account. So I was typing all the stuff in, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're already, too, you're already too late. Yeah. But I didn't know that. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, they're sold out. I'm like, those assholes. God damn. And I was so pissed that such I, a frustrating thing. I was so mad. I was so pissed. And I'm like, fuck them. I can just make my own. Why are they so goddamn expensive? They don't need to be that expensive. 
And so that was what got me started on making the, the first turbones is I think I already had a bare bones or you could like, you know, they were always in stock so you could get bare bones pretty easily. And I bought some titanium. And anyway, that was how that led into that was I was pissed at the BRS drop. Okay. And so that, that was kind of how that whole thing got started is I, I was just mad. Usually when I do my best, not my best work, but when I get most productive, it's because I'm mad at something. <laughs> Well, yeah, I've always used that a, a similar com thing. I say, you know, if I don't complain, nothing gets done. Right. So. Yeah. If it's not working, yeah, then it's just you just let it fester and sit. And... Um, um, do you remember your first knife? Or so you said your first Bali song, Good Bali. Was that your first interest in knives or have you always kind of? I always loved knives. Like I, every time we would go to any kind of sportsman show or gun store or anything, like I always loved just looking at all the knives and looking at the, like I didn't know anything. So I like looking at the, you know, the metal and different kinds of steels and like all the Kershaw leaks, they were everywhere. And I've, I've always liked the knives. And, but first I was into guns and then I moved out and I started paying rent and paying for bills. And I'm like, I need a cheaper hobby. And so I switched from guns to knives. Like, Oh, this would be cheaper. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't. No. Um, it, for a little bit it was because I was buying cheaper stuff but then you know you, you could buy more and more and, so, and did you get yeah. into like learning all the tricks and like flipping a lot or mm, I, at first yeah I got into flipping it and then I just kind of like plateaued and I never really got much better I got good enough to be able to judge like okay this is a good knife or oh, you know this this isn't really my thing um, but yeah I never really got like super good there's that guy uh, I think it's Red Edge or whatever, and I love the way that he throws them around. Like he's yeah. always throwing them in the air. I yeah. always loved watching that. Uh, McLovin always throws them around. I love watching him too. Heck yeah, yeah. I, I never got to like that. I never got really good. I, I was never in any competition type stuff. Right. But yeah, I always just like doing. You know, it's just like fidgeting with any other thing. It's just fun to do. Cool. Um. So that so. You just got pissed at the drops and said, fuck it, I'm going to make my own knives. That, yeah, that's, you know, that, that was how it started. I just got really angry. <laughs> I was like, those fucking guys are ripping me off and uh, fuck them anyway. I'll make my own. It'll be better than theirs. Uh, yeah, I was upset. So while you were <laughs> making, or was there anybody helping you? Like, as you got in, what influences? Did you just look at knives and figure it out on your own? Or did you hit at up other? At the very start, it was just, it was just me. And, like, I just kind of figured it out at the very start and then like a few months into it I don't know how Matt Cook got involved I can't remember how his name came up but I, I asked him a question or something and he lives in he lives in Portland too and he's like well why don't you just come by and I'm like 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 your shop and he's like yeah I'm like you don't know me and he's like that's fine you can just come on by and he brought me into his shop and he taught me a shitload of stuff I mean he taught me a lot of just really easy things that saved me a lot of hassle Right. And he did it just to be, he did it just to be nice, which was really weird, you know, cause like knife guys are pretty secretive. They don't like sharing that kind of stuff. Right. And so it, him, him doing that was a big influence for me. Like I was gonna, I still plan on doing it. It was filming how to make a turbones from start to finish and then just releasing it. And so everyone could just make their own. I mean, it's not that simple, but you know, the, anyone who really wants to do it could, could do it. Um, so yeah, Matt really lent a hand when no one else will. I mean, a lot, you know, they, it's, to be fair, it's, it's hard. I mean, you, you spend so much time and money and you bang your head against the wall trying to figure this stuff out for someone to just be like, Hey, can you just show me how to do it? It's, it's really, you know, it kind of irks. You don't want to explain the whole thing, but it kind of irks you. You're like, you know, I just spend so much time and money trying to figure this out on my own. Like, why should I just give you the answer? Right. And so, yeah, Matt, Matt helped me out a lot. Um, and were you, did you ever, study like schooling or anything like that or so did you learn like with your family business did you just grow up and learn things as you went and... um with the with the family business everyone showed me how to do stuff i that that i needed a lot of help with but with the knife stuff i just kind of winged it i have a hard time with school um my sister who just joined she likes school a lot but i do not like i can't pay attention in school i have a hard time with it i just want to leave so just sitting down here in the basement. I mean, I was working five, 10 hour days and then I would come in here on the weekends and then work another, you know, four or five hours on Saturday and then like another three or four hours on Sunday. Just so your learning. shop where you're at is a machine. It's a machine shop, your shop, but 
um, it's inside of the facilities of your families. Is that what you're saying? Um, not exactly. It, it's not a machine shop. It was actually, this is our garage for driving in like box trucks to work on. When we had a dedicated mechanic, we haven't had one forever. So this basement was pretty much unused. So I went and got you like, we didn't have any, we didn't have any mills. We didn't have any lathes. This is all stuff that I've gotten over the years. Um, the most, you know, I don't know, intense thing we had was a two by 48 sander upstairs. Okay. Everything else was just real basic, you know, Harbor Freight drill press and stuff. Okay. So what are, are you making other things right now there? Um, not at the moment. I was, I, I do every once in a while, I'll fiddle around. Like I just went and bought titanium rings just off of Amazon. And I've just been like goofing around with rings. I was like, eh, we'll do something a little different. But okay. mainly I've just been waiting on the MNBs from JK. I've been waiting on the prototype for that. So it's just been hurry up and wait. I've had all the, I've had titanium sitting here that I've been meaning to work on. And I've had two of the new bare bones just staring at me on my desk for the last, I don't know, like three or four months. I've been meaning to do it. I just haven't gotten around to it. Right. I could have. I'm just being lazy. So what, um, so take us, can you take us a little trip through the history? So uh, connecting to the PDN and kind of where to where you're at now? Yeah. So I was doing those turbones and I loved doing them. Like I really, I enjoyed doing it. I think I did. I, I, the number, I can't remember the exact number, but it was like, I thought it was like somewhere around like 80 or something of them. Like I built 80 of them. Every single one was built in here by me a hundred percent by hand. Like none of it ever got sent off to anybody no two will match up like they're all they're all done completely by hand <clears throat> um and I, I really i i like doing them but it did take you know it was taking longer and longer i think i got it down to like 90 minutes when it was just solid handles and champers like i, I remember i got one done in 90 minutes and that was really cool um but then then drilling you know became involved because you can't flip it if it's six ounces so i right. had to start out holes and then I started drilling more holes and more holes. And then I started doing milling and removing more and more and more. And it started taking longer and longer. And so I had to start charging more, but that it defeated the whole point. The whole point was that they just, they needed to not be expensive, but they needed to be competent flippers. And so I was trying to keep the price of the re the rehandle under the price of a new knife, which was like 220 bucks or something. And so by the time I hit $200, I was like, this is defeating the whole purpose of it. And so I started just kind of doing like, all right, I'll do 10 more really nice ones and then I'll just end it. And that was the, the V threes, like the last of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I was like, well, I don't really know what to do. I'm like, I don't want to re start rehandling reps. Um, what's his twiggle. It's already does a really good job with those. And so I was like, I don't really want to do reps. <clears throat> I don't really want to do luchas. I don't want to do any of that. I'd like to do, my original goal was to do what machine wise does, you know, where he just does it all in house. Cause then you can keep the price as low as possible. That is what I want to do. Like, I feel like they don't need to be so expensive. Um, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's, I need to get this stuff done. And so I had Julian, I met him at the blade show or JK design. I met him at blade in 2018. And that was when he still was doing like the first emissaries. And I right. think I got two of them. I got one for me and one for a buddy. And he asked him, he told me, he's like, if you ever want machine work done, you know, just let me know. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, so then like two years later, I was like, actually, you know, hey, I do need this work done. And so those wouldn't have been possible without him because I don't know how to do any of the CAD work. All I do is just doodle the design and right. then just, you know, send it to him. And I sent, you know, I draw out all the dimensions and everything, but then he's the one that inputs in the computer. And basically the PD or the, the turbones was getting too expensive. And I was like, I may as well just make my own knife. And it just kind of snowballed from there and it became an eight to $900 knife. Right. Um, yeah. That's, and, that's kind of from a that doodle to, and a doodle to this. How do you, is, did the doodle, did it end up like it was in your head? It was shockingly, it was exactly what I pictured. Like it was exactly what I wish I should have brought the doodle down. Um, it was in, it was, the power went out. There was like an ice storm or something. And Julian, I hadn't heard from him for like a few weeks. And I knew like, you know, the time, the deadline was closing in for me to start, you know, to, to do it. But he texted me that night. He's like, Hey man, you got the, I'm ready to do it. You know, can you send it to me? I'm like, Oh shit. Cause I didn't have it done. 
And so it was just like on a whim in the dark by candlelight, I drew out the handle design. I'd already done the blade, but I was like, I, I've done enough handles by hand to know roughly how much material to remove just with eyeballing it. And so I just did it in the dark and I'm like, let's just do some, uh, do a channel there and we'll do some surf, you know, and it was, it was just kind of thrown to, I don't want to say it was thrown together. There was, there was definitely more thought and refinement as we went along, but it was just like spur of the what moment. All right, the ball make, make milling it. continuing to the end and all that. Yeah, I like that too. That was really cool, I thought. But it turns out that's a real pain in the ass to finish. I can see that. Especially, I was like, oh, and this was from his, or I think it was the Orca. Yeah, it must have been the Orca. I was like, oh man, I love these little like grooves down, the ones that, the crosscut grooves. I was like, those are really cool. Those yeah. so stupid, I have done that. Those are really hard to get into to finish. Yeah. This is the, I have the one, I think you've seen a couple of my comments. I like the, I think you got it right, right away. Yeah. I know the one the really cool. people like the V2, people like the V1. I'm a V1. I like the V1. Yeah, there's a lot of, I was surprised how many people preferred the V1 over the V2. Because I, the reason why I had to do the V2 was tuning the V1s was such a pain. There was such that, you know, that spine is thick all the way to the end. And so down here, you'll have more wiggle than you will up here. Uh-huh. So I was like, dude, I gotta, I gotta trim the fat a little. I gotta remove some of this inside here just to make life a little easier because it was taking a while to tune them. Um, this thing is great, man. This thing has always been good since I got it. I mean, oh, that's good. Yeah, this one has been awesome, and uh, um, it's still what four point five ounces, I think. So it's still like around there. It's you know. You took off some weight. I think that what is the V2 4.3 or something like that? Yeah, that? it just shaved. I think it was point point two ounces that it was end, ended up taking off. Like it wasn't about the weight so much as it was about doing this. And then Julian was actually he's the one that that changed the grind up here. Uh -huh. Which I mean, it's just what you prefer. I'm I'm fine with either one. I actually don't own a V. Well, I kind of own a V1. I gave one of them to to Joe Hansen because he helped me a lot, and I gave uh, Dirty D. I let him take he took my personal one because I told him he was one of the first guys, like when I was showing sloppy pictures of titanium, like four or five years ago, he's like, dude, i keep going. And he was super supportive and super nice. And I told him, Dirty D is awesome. ever, yeah, I told him like, if I ever make a knife, I'll, I'll give you one. And so I, I sent him over the, uh, the other, the only other V one. So I, I just have a V two. Yeah, dude, that, that's a great knife. Thank so, you. Yeah. It, it's held that, up. that was, you went from, just like that order of things. Yeah, it was. Have it was you ever just, done was, other things like fidget, like, uh, I don't know, uh, there's a horn going off in front of my house. You can probably hear it in the back. Uh, it stopped. Um, uh, have you ever done any like knucks or anything else or? No, I've thought about doing knucks and I've thought about doing other things, but I don't know, I just, I, I never got, they never quite grabbed me like these did. Right. And so you're working a lot. You're rigging for your come. Your family does like events. Yeah, so we like. I don't know if you ever went to like the waterfront, but they would have like big tents and blues festival and all that stuff. We're we're the company that has all the tents and the crew, and the crew goes out there and sets up tents and tables and chairs and all that stuff. Scaffolding and all that crap. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, we'll do staging and yeah, all all that fun stuff. And it was just happens. You know, I had a basement and. I had the room to spare, and so when it came time to start making stuff, it was really easy. Or not really easy, but, you know, I had the space. Is there other people around you that you hang out with that flip that are into what you're doing? Uh, God, not really. A lot of the, all, all like, the, the, the best knife friends I have are all online. Uh, Matt, you know, he lives a few miles away from me, but he kind of does. He sticks to his, his own thing. Um. No, I have another buddy, but he's not on Instagram anymore. And now, no, it's just, it's really just me and everyone online. Cool. Yeah. That's, it's, I'm just always curious, you know, like, because there, there are more people around, you know, there's other people around, but it's also like you live a, a normal life, so you can't yeah. deal with it all the time. But yeah, just curious, you know, like, cause, and then other people who have somebody maybe helping them in their shop, it's their friend who is also into flipping and they happen to be lucky enough to also hang out and work you know like yeah. but you do all your work on your own you, you nobody works with you 
No, it's just, well, when it comes to, like, the turbine stuff and everything, yeah, it was always just me. Every once in a while, I get a lot of people that would express interest, but as soon as they had to put forth some effort, usually the, the DMs would stop. Do you have a new knife coming up or anything in mind? Anything new coming? I, I've just got the MNB coming. That Julian's got the parts. He said he heat treated the blade last night, I think. And so I should have that prototype. I'm hoping to bring that. If I can get away from work, I'll come to Blade Show and I'll bring that with me and just let people Have you go to shown anything what that's going to look like or just talked about it? No, I had a video. I, well, Julian sent me a video of the handles. I haven't, I haven't even seen the blade yet. I mean, I know what the blade, you know, I designed the blade, but uh, I haven't seen like what it physically looks like. Yeah, I think he's just going to send it to me. And then the first Have time you we'll see it. Have posted anything about it though? Or are we just yeah. trying to? Yeah. What is, no, I, what is, I've done I've done a couple story posts on it. Okay. All but right. the whole point is that it's just that you can swap all the parts from this to that, so you can take the blade off, or you can take the pins out, or you can take the screws. Everything from the PDN will go on to the M and B, and you can you know take the blade off of one and put on the other. You could have What's one hand. What's the M and B stand for? What's that? So yeah, so PDN is Puddin is the dog. Right. Moonbear is the other dog. He's my dad's old dog. I just. I always thought that the knife names, everyone took them way too seriously. And so I just was like, I took the piss out of it and said, yo, this is pudding. But I named it PDN so that if people, like, it could just mean anything. So if anyone didn't I know, it wouldn't matter. Um, MNB just stands for Moon Bear, which is my dad's dog. And it's just, it's just good as any name. When I just thought it was funny. Told, I forget who it was. Somebody told me that it was your dog. I was like, that's so great. And that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got a cool dog. Your dog, I was going to tell you, I used to have, you know, I was teasing about my cats. I do have a couple cats here, but I am also by, at heart a dog guy. And I mm -hmm. used to have a half Rottweiler, half Great Dane that looks a lot like Puddin. Really? She passed away now, but she was like oh. my best friend. And yeah, and so your dog, it looks like Lab almost or something. Yeah, he's all Lab. Okay, mine was half Great Dane, half Rottweiler, but looked made it look like a Lab. Oh. So. I can see that. Yeah. What state, where are you at? I'm in California. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're at California. San Diego. Can... Oh, at least it's in San Diego. I like San Diego. San Diego's not bad, yeah. Yeah, no, I like I mean, San Diego and I like Northern California and like Redding and stuff. Right. Yeah, there's good parts of California. There's good there parts is. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez. Man, just whack this into my glass. Um, uh, so. You got that coming up, and you might have one at Blade Show. So you're going to be going to Blade Show Atlanta. You'll be there. If if I, if I can get the prototype in time, I, that would be the reason to go. Would just be to get it, you know, because people who are going to buy it are the people that are going to go to the show. So right. that would be the idea. Yeah, it would be to get that and then just give it to someone and be like, here, have fun. And hopefully, I'll well, get I it back. Wish to you could show. see a picture of it. I'm curious now. I, so. I didn't even think about it. I should have brought one down with. Uh, I don't even think I have a picture. Can I? Is there uh, I don't something know if on your store on your that posted about it? Yeah, there should be something on my story post. It's actually, it, you know, how did I miss it that? Simply, it's a lot like the PDN in every way, except it doesn't have these the groove and the cross. It's it's just shaped a little bit differently, but it's the same exact you know layout. It's a sheep's foot blade or sheep's foot kind of blade, but it's it's extremely similar to this. It's chanwich instead of chan or instead of sandwich. Um, yeah, it's it's basically well, that pretty different though. If it's Chan, like, that's cool. I'm curious, man. I'm really yeah, curious. It's gonna be cool. The idea is that it's going to be cool. Well, well, you probably just added another knife to my list of knives I need to get. Hopefully. <laughs> well, the idea was too, if you have a PDN, you didn't have to buy it at drop, but if you have one, then you're already on the list to buy one because the whole point is that you can swap parts between them. So I'd like Please. to just sell it to people who already have one. Count me in. Yeah, you're already on the list. Awesome. Um, so you're hoping to be a Blade Show, but you haven't gotten your plane ticket yet. Um, no, I think I bought mine last year, like two weeks before the show. It's probably going to be. I've been having that debate. I bought my ticket already, but the prices were like kind of slowly creeping up and up. And I was like, I thought they were supposed to go down at some point right before. <laughs> I was like, I better just get, you know, I'm, I have a table there and I have a hotel. I'm like, I just got to get my ticket and get it over with. So you got a table there? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have, I own a, a shop and I sell yeah. knives yeah. and work with a lot of different people like JK, I just sold, had his, uh, the Orca trainer in, yeah, Squid Industries, anyways, a bunch of 
uh, friends and people you know as well. I saw those, but I also saw turntables, vinyl, record, Dude, fuck, yeah, so that's like awesome. record shop slash knife shop. And then my how wife do you, does, How do you sell the knives there? I mean, I don't know what the rules are in California. How does that, is there ever any like, oh, you can't sell, or you just don't, we, we I was about to say, you just don't talk about it. That's probably the right move. There's another shop. I think it's San Francisco. Yeah. There's some other place. That's, I mean, I'm sure there's more than that. But. There are. There are workarounds. I'm half joking. But basically, you just, you can Don't sell to law it. enforcement or military, and you can sell online, but you can't, like, to display them for sale, although I do display them in my shop and stuff. Yeah. It, it's like, you just got to be careful and be, like, not be... I don't know. It's a big gray area. And I have my argument and other people have had issues. And then a lot of it's just kind of overlooked if you're not. A dick? Yeah. If you're you not. Just kind of, yeah, you just sort of roll with it. We'll see. Maybe I'll get busted eventually. I don't know. Maybe they'll come down on me, but I'll have a good argument. I mean, I just don't feel like I'm selling like something illegal. I don't feel that way. You know, like it's like it's maybe I'm naive, but whatever. Um what else do you do? So we talked about what else you do for work. So that's all the only thing you're, else you're doing is working with the family, making your knives, enjoying life. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically just been hanging the last few months. Like I said, I've just been neglecting work. Uh, <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of parts from Psycho that we talked about doing this like two years ago. It was a design that really? Arthur did. and uh, Arthur did the handle design, excuse me. And then I made them on a, fuck, what was it? I think it was a Psycho rep blade. And I made the handles originally, you know, just like I do with the turbo and stuff. And Psycho and I chatted about doing this years ago. I think it was 2019. And he just now, he's like, oh, hey, I got all the parts. And so he sent me all the parts. Nice. Then, oh, man. So before was... I get to m stuff, I've got, I don't know. So what are you going to do with that? I got a bunch of handles. I got I to gotta finish them, basically. So I got to do a bunch of sanding and reaming and all that fun stuff. Damn, those look nice. I love that blade. Yeah, he always does really good. He takes a little bit to get a hold of, but he always does a really good job, I think. I, I've never gotten anything bad from him. Yeah, I've never flipped one of his knives, and I'd certainly like to own one. That'd be so cool. He had that, uh, it was, well, I don't remember the name. He, see, he takes his names too seriously, too. I thought Psycholope was a great name, but he wanted something different, I think. <laughs> um <laughs> He had one where it was like cross, you know, cross hatching all the way down. I can't remember the name of it, but man, he had that at Blade last year, and it was so cool. And I, I wish he would do more. You know, it's kind of like me; he does his own thing. So, I wish he would do more knife stuff though, because it is all this stuff was really cool, at least that I've handled. Yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, he would be an interesting person to interview. Because, uh, but I, I, my whole thing is I have to own somebody's knife first. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because I don't want to like have an interview and not really know something, you know. So um, I have to. Either, like, but he has quite a character. Um, uh, what other hobbies do you have? What do you enjoy doing? Um, I do a lot of. Well, I used to do a lot more like PC gaming. I used to do a lot of gaming, and then I got like it was like 2019. I was like 200. And, 87 or 290 pounds somewhere in there and i was just like i just got up and i'm like i'm gonna go walk and like i just started working out and so i just kind of dove into that and just got more and more into working out and nice. that ate up more time. and actually that coincides with when i stopped doing the turbones because it just took up too much time and so i ran out of time and wasn't able to do as much knife stuff but i lost like i'm down like 100 pounds so mainly i do a lot of Working out, PC gaming, and, and knife stuff in my spare time. Yeah, I used to be a bit thinner, and then now I'm like, I'm older, so I'm like, and I'm like, gosh, I, I've been trying to go get back into the gym, especially with the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't, a lot of people took advantage or used the pand pandemic in different ways, and mine you know, I did a lot, got into doing a lot of knife reviews and all that stuff. I wasn't extra. Yeah. My gym membership ended and I just, you know, the walks I had were short around the neighborhood, you know, not as much yeah. stuff. So now I'm like, yeah, to, to get back into it. 
Putin has, that's where Putin is right now is he's walking with my sister probably. He has to do it. He has like a 1.8 mile walk or 1.5 mile walk that he has to do twice a day. He's such a brat, but <laughs> we all. <laughs> so how was the pandemic for you? Like what did, did you, did your work? I, mean, I, I got really, I mean, I got in a lot better shape. Like uh, everyone I knew was like getting fatter, but I mean, my sister got into working out a lot more. She was already working out. Um, but yeah, I got, got really into it and, feel a lot better now so Good. that's nice yeah i just got into a lot of working out and pc gaming i guess nice cool um, oh, she just needs to walk. how do you feel about the bali song community when you look at it i mean are you involved a lot um do you see growth in it and a progression do you're you, or does it get old for you or um i like it i like I like seeing like the big companies. I love seeing the Kershaw make or Kershaw make like a new titanium knife. I think that's super cool. And I loved it when they came out with the Lucha. And even when like I know a lot of people doing like Shrey, but like when they were doing they did some new knife recently too. It was kind of like a Lucha competitor. All those I love seeing the big companies make cheap knives because then you know maybe one percent might get into it at our level and they might buy my knife. And right. so bringing more and more people and I tried you know I just I want as many people into it as you know as you can get and then that will make you know more knives will come out of it more machine wise or uh what's his name Bally knives making knives you know just more people making stuff is uh, to me it's always a good thing you know for a while there it was just BRS and Hom and that seemed to be about it or you could get like a Protech Flyfather or Microtech TAC3 like there wasn't there wasn't a ton when I first kind of got into it um, and now there's a lot more, which is awesome. Is there a knife that you have that you're like really impressed with as in your collection? Do you have a collection? No, I've, you know, I've bought and sold so many knives. The only ones I have right now are a Seraph and a PDN. Well, in that, I guess I have that, uh, Psycho knife and I have, okay, well, no, I guess maybe I do have a collection. I didn't really think <laughs> I did. <laughs> But, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, there's a few. There's a couple more upstairs. There's like an old Tac 3 that Dirty D gave me. And <laughs> I just have a lot of random odds. Now that I think about it, I guess I do have a collection. But no, like, there's two main knives that I have. I always have a PDN, was usually within arm's reach. And then just the Seraph, just because I know once I sell it, I probably won't be able to get another one for a while. So I, I don't, I'm not a collector. I don't collect stuff. I, I always move it. So you'll if you see a new knife, you'll try and get one and flip it for a while and then sell it and then kind of keep that with a couple knives at a time kind of thing. Yeah. I usually just have like what's in my pocket. So it's usually one or two. Right. Um, yeah. I, I used to be like rabid. Like I would buy, I, I used to have quite the, a little bit of a serious drug problem way back when. And so I would, I, you know, that kind of bled over into the knife stuff. Where it was like a rabid, like I want the next one, the next one, the next one, and that that went on for like a couple of years. I think the first year that I had knives, I'd spent something like thirty thousand dollars on knives. Oh my god! And yeah, it was. I bought a lot, bought a lot, and sold a lot. But, you know, I was I was also buying you know a six hundred dollar knife, and I would sell it for like five hundred bucks or something. Or if it was a beagler, it'd be two hundred bucks. But you know, I, I would buy and sell it, and then use that money to buy another knife, and then another knife, and so. Right. That went on for a while. And that was actually, that, that helped me a lot because I kind of got to check everything out and sort of learn like what I wanted to take from some others to make my own. Yeah, there's a part of my collection that's like that. There's some are keepers and I keep mm -hmm. and, and others are like kind of in rotation. Mm -hmm. That's what I've learned, you know, and I, the ones I, yeah, I don't know how I, I sometimes you can be a keeper and still get sold out. So, yeah, know. that's happened to me a lot. There's been a lot of times where I'm like, I'm going to keep this forever. And then a week later, I'm like, ooh, that looks pretty cool. So I always well, I warn my grow. knives. Like, you always tell them, man, like, I'm going to suck. Be careful. You don't know. I might sell you. Yeah. So don't, <laughs> I think cut, I warned don't, them. don't cut me too bad. <laughs> Do you have a favorite knife at the moment? Oh, gosh. No. I don't. Yeah, have, I, don't I, have, so. I have, like, five favorite knives at the moment, you know. Oh, I'm I like looking at all of them back there, like, the Seraph and the Tsunami, to me, are some of the better flipper knives right now. Yep. Uh, I really um, like the Tsunami. Uh, and I the Seraph was chat, just like the uh, I just got a... I'm going to send this off to Hammer. It's like, uh, I got a, 
um, latchless chab kookery that I'm gonna send to Hammer. Yeah. To get work done. He always does good stuff. I don't. I'm. I'm not. I wasn't a huge fan of, of his knife. I don't know why. Just the way it felt. I didn't really like it that much. But I love his mod work. All of his mod work has always been awesome. Um. I don't know. I like DCB's work a lot. I, I don't know. There's there's several I like right now. So it's never I can never answer that question good because I, I really do like them all. The Area 51 to Pluto is really nice. I'm really I haven't cool. tried that one yet. I, yeah. I heard that one was pretty cool. I had the Solo. That one, I really like that, but I had to sell it to pay for the last things of PDNs. The V2 on the Pluto is really nice because it's much lighter. It's like 4.5 or something, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, I heard the V1s were a little bit heavy in the on the ass end. Yeah. Um, what are some flippers you like out there? Anybody you want to say hey to or, or does it – or is it, you, um, I guess you said Red Edge earlier. Yeah, I was going to say Red Edge. Red Edge. Uh, those are the two that I, I – I think I've watched them the most. Right. Just thinking. There what was another guy other, on YouTube. Sorry, what? Is there, what about other makers that you're like, I really want that knife that you're looking to try out? Um, at the moment, I want to try Julian's new knife that he just posted today. Heck yeah. I think everyone does. That thing looked really cool. That's exactly what I would want to do. Just, you know, it looks like just a, a pale kind of groove cut in there and then just an awesome looking blade. I was like, that looks perfect i want i don't know how much it is though i'd like to yeah know how much it's kind of simple but then it seems like something interesting is going on with the spacer and the weight system and the jimping it looks yeah. kind of interesting so i'm curious to because the rest of it's so so standard or i don't know if standard's the word but yeah we will say standard looking yeah it's simple i i yeah. really like it I, I i didn't know you know i mean we talk a lot but i don't i hadn't seen it that was the first time i saw it too i'm like well, that's pretty sweet and then the blade kind of has that monarch look, but a little bit more upright or something. Yeah, yeah, it's got kind of that swoop to it. It's really cool looking. Yeah, I'm just wonder how much it's going to be. He usually doesn't get out of bed for less than a thousand bucks, so I don't think well, so. We'll have to see how much it is. Around, right around there, I imagine. But it yeah. looks like one that could be lesser, maybe. It looks like you could do like seven fifty, but I, you know. I think we all hope that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we all hope. Uh, it, it's probably going to be 900 bucks or 1000 bucks. I'm guessing, because it is, it is sandwiched, but still. Right, right. Um, do you have an interesting story, maybe, about Portland? Something that's happened? Maybe it can relate to knives or not, but some – it could be funny, crazy – so. There was a guy, one of the first knife deals I did, it wasn't in Portland, uh, it was a knife deal I did, it was a guy had a Basilisk Elite, I think it was, and I had a 63 fly tie with solid titanium handles, which fucking sucked, the thing was awful. Um, and this guy was like, oh yeah, I'll trade you my Basilisk Elite for a 63 with fly tie handles. To anyone who knows anything, you know, you know they're not equal. Um, but I was like, okay. And this is like when I first started, he's like, yeah, we'll do a trade. So I was like, okay, so we were just going to do a straight trade. And actually it wasn't, it wasn't an elite at first. It was a regular basilisk. And then he goes, oh, all I have is the elite. We take the elite. I'm like, huh, even better. And so I insured the package, shipped it to him with the slowest shipping I could on purpose. Cause I was like, I don't know. It sounds kind of fishy. And I shipped it off to him. It got almost all the way to him, and I noticed his package wasn't coming to me anymore. It was going back. I'm like, huh. So I, I called the package back. This is like right when I started, so I was still very new. Um, and I, I forget what it's called, but like you know, I called the package back <clears throat> through the post office. They got it all the way to Roanoke Rapids, North Car or Roanoke Rapids, wherever the fuck Roanoke Rapids is, I forget. Uh, it got all the way there. And then came all the way back here, got to my post office before he tried to recall his package. And he ended up, anyway, long story short, he ended up stealing my package. They delivered it. I called the post office that morning. It was like, hey, don't deliver the package. The guy's a thief. And they're like, we can't, we're not going to, we're not going to look for your package. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> so that was the, like one of the first deals that I ever and did. And he never sent anything to you? So he sent a package and never made it to me because he called it back. So I don't know. Like, to this day, I'm like, he wouldn't call back a package if there was nothing valuable in it. I'm like, I wonder if he shipped it 
and it was just like a crime of opportunity. And he's uh, like, you know, oh, if I can get it back, you know. So anyway, he ended up stealing it from me. And that's why to this day, I still don't do business in Roanoke Rapids, just in case I have to deal with this fucking guy. Yeah. Um, but I also don't insure packages anymore because I tried to, you know, do a claim. I insured it for like 400 bucks. And they're like, no, the package was delivered. And I'm like, yeah, but I called it back. You guys got it all the way. And then you still delivered it. It, it was a whole thing, but they, yeah. they wouldn't pay for so I don't pay for insurance anymore. I don't do business in Roanoke Rapids. <laughs> but that was that was one of my first lessons. I also didn't do trades for a very long time. I didn't do any trades with, with anybody really. Oh. Yeah. Well, that was that was one of my first times ever learning a, a lesson. <laughs> yeah. I have quite a few of those. So one yeah. time my guitar was stolen from my truck and then these guys that were hanging out there said, oh, we know who stole your your guitar. We can get it back for you. I'm like, uh-huh. Okay. And they're like, yeah, it's up <laughs> here in this hotel room. This guy took it. And if you give us, he'll sell it back to you for 50 bucks. And I'm like, fuck, it's like a $400 guitar. And I wanted my guitar really bad. Yeah. So the guy's like, Okay, you, I but you can't go with me. You got to give me the fifty bucks and I'll be back. And I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> I'm like, I don't. Think where you? Your money you know, who are you? He's like, my friend will stay with you. And I was like, okay. We I talked about it with my friends. We were all there. We kind of went to the edge of the building with them, and the the friends like, yeah, I'll stay here with you or whatever. We give the guy the money. He goes and disappears. All the friend, the, sudden the friend just looks at us. And goes from like a nice guy to like the most pissed off person. He's like, get the fuck away from me. I'm like, really? what? I just gave you money. I just gave your friend money. He's like, get away from me. You know, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, get the fuck away from me. Stay away from me. You know, and then starts walking away. I'm like, hey, you can't walk away. Your friend has our money. They stole 50 bucks from me on top of my guitar. They on stole top of the guitar. <laughs> what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> and I was like, this guy's, and he was massive. And he went from like a really nice guy to this like really mean thug really quick. And I was like, oh man. Like, what the fuck is wrong with people? I'm like, we ain't messing with you, man. Take the guitar, Here, take the 50 bucks. Fuck, no. lesson learned. That yeah. will never happen again. Yeah, I've, I've had my car broken into a lot. It's like, is it worth just, is it worth the, I don't know if it's a felony to, to break into, I thought it was, but, you know, they break in to steal the change. And it's like, you know, now I just look at it, well, it at really least it break it? my window. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, is it worth the dollar sixty-seven you get in change? But sure. I guess it keeps happening. Yeah. But, well, you got to buy well, a knife with somebody's money. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we've been here for like 60 years, but we're we're leaving. This city has just gone to hell. I mean, it was it was always a really pretty and clean city, but man, it's a shithole. Oh I mean, up in Portland, say how horrible it's gotten. It's bad, man. Like I don't like I. I mean, I live really close to here, and I mean, they've broken into my car a bunch of times. Like I said, they've broken into here at least at least 16 times in the last two years. Oh my gosh! And we don't. The cop, I mean, they broke into our store, like cut, drilled out the lock or ripped the lock off and then came in and we didn't even call the cops. There's, there's no point to it anymore. So we're just going to, we're supposed to be leaving sometime between October and I think like May or something. Leaving that Portland or leaving that shop? Yes. Leaving both. Really? Where, where are you, where's the, where are you going? Where's the destination? I don't think we're going to relocate. I think I think we're pretty much just going to wrap it up and do something else. Oh. So Will that's, you keep that's making knives? Me. Will your business? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know what I'm going to do. Because, like, I can I pick up my phone? Will it mess with it if I move around? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Because, like, if I, you know, moving around, this lathe here is heavy as shit. And so, you know, it also takes a goofy-ass plug and... Then you got your mill and you've got, you know, another mill and then you got a sander and another, you know, it's just, it's a lot of stuff to move around. And so I'm like, uh, do I want to relocate all these things? And I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about it, debating if I want to, if I want to move everything or if I just want to do something else. I sure do like doing it though. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I could see 
you know, depending where you are, a lot of people would be like, oh, you got to keep all that. But depending where you are in life and where you kind of want to be, I had to do that. I had a business and I had to just sell a bunch of the equipment and things and close up shop. And it's not easy, but. No, it sucks. Like, I don't want to, you know, I'd love to keep doing it, but it's not easy to move all this stuff. I'm looking for the original PDN blade, which I guess would be number 68 and a half, but I can't find it. It means it might have gotten stolen at some point, which, man, that'd be a real bummer. No, oh, man. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of stuff to move. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do next. What do your friends and family think about your making knives and do they understand like the the side like how it's different the, you know people in the community respect the pdn respect you as a maker and then you can but do your does your family think it's cool that you're into bali songs yeah um they all thought it, my mom was like why are you because she's also my she's a cpa and accountant and stuff so she does my books she's like why are you spending so much money on it i'm like well you know i've got to learn the difference between a select replicant and a carbon fiber replicant, mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so she's like, why do you have to buy three of them? And it was just, anyway, so she was a little worried at first, but my dad thought it was the coolest thing. And my sister, you know, they were all super supportive and they were really nice with like watching pudding while I was down here doing this. So they were, they were all, everyone was super nice about it. They didn't like the mess. I'm sure my dad doesn't like the mess I leave down here sometimes. It's a little messy, but you know, no one's using it. All right. Um, what were you into as a kid, like hobbies? So, were you into, you know, I did a lot of skateboarding. I did a lot of skateboarding and a lot of video games then too. I, I was always into video games, but uh, mainly I did I did a lot of skateboarding. I did a bit of snowboarding. Um, I used to, like I said, I was into guns for like from the time I was like 14 and I had a job basically until I was probably 17 or eight, I was into guns. And then, you know, when I have to start paying my own bills, I was like, I have to do something cheaper. And so I get gotten to knives, but I've always liked knives. And I've always liked guns and I've always liked, I've always liked just mechanics in general. So like, you know, I liked revolvers cause I just liked working the cylinder and hearing everything move around. Um, I've always loved all that stuff. Yeah. And then how do you keep yourself organized? Like, uh, I mean, you're talking about closing up shop, but I mean, do you find, do you feel that you as a maker, like um, when you were doing all this work, was it more chaos or did you have an organized sense to things? There was no organization to it. It was just my, my best advice to myself would have been just to keep the, the, the list very short. So I think at one time I had nine names on the list. And to me, that was like, because I'm, I'm going to get them all done. Like when I would take an order, I'd have it done like that weekend. It wasn't, you don't wait weeks usually for my stuff. It was, it was a week with, with like any longer. And I felt awful. I felt like I was holding on to their money and I would just pressure myself and I would work seven thirty in the morning till six at night. And sometimes I would then come in the basement and keep working. And so I was just running myself ragged. So I figured out I can handle like three orders and anything beyond that. And I start to stress myself out too much. Right. Yeah. But it's funny because no one ever, no one ever put the pressure on me. Like no one ever hassled me. And I mean, everyone yeah, was you're doing all this stuff by hand and they're all by yourself. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. It was always just me like freaking myself out. Right. And then do you, do you feel that, that, that translates <laughs> over say into your personal, not to get too into anybody's personal life, but in your life out i call the personal life life outside of knives you know like mm. any whatever that is and do you feel that the things you gain from say flipping to making to like being in the involved in this translates in some way to help you in normal life oh, it was huge yeah it was huge i'm not the most social person like i i talk to people all day long but i still felt like pretty kind of alone you know and this kind of got me starting to to talk to people and I had never built anything ever. Like I never worked with wood. I never worked with aluminum. My first thing ever was working with titanium. Uh, and so it, it taught me a lot. And a lot of this stuff translates directly over uh, to my real life. You know, like I, I never thought that I could make, like I could actually make a set of handles that would work 
And so like when I finally start making them and they're coming together, like it's a pretty satisfying thing. And then that's like, Oh, I could do this. I could do a lot of stuff. And, and then, you know, that got me showing it to people and then talking to people and then meeting people face to face and talking more. So it, it helped out tremendously. It was huge. Okay. Yeah. So then I guess, you know, so, you know, my last question here, which you've kind of already sort of like sort of dove into, but then now I can kind of expand on it was where did you see this all heading in 10 years from now, the evolution, where do you want it to go? But you've already kind of explained that you might be closing shop. So if it's not knives, if it's not, if it is, or whatever it is, is it work? You're not retiring. You're evolving no. in some way. Do you, will this be something like, I just want to go work for somebody and not worry. I don't want to own my own business. Or you're like, no, I want to create something that's mine. Or I either want to create something. Like I, I love doing, I love the creative stuff. I love making handles and working with titanium. It's super cool. Um, but I either want to do that or do something where I get to work outside and just do something simple like farm. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> sure, yeah, I'm locked up in the shop all the time. I used to record, yeah. I had a recording studio and I'd record bands and I was in that room all the time in a cave. Yeah, and, in the dark. Yeah, and it's just like when I stopped doing that and committed to not being in the studio all the time and be outside more, uh, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'd like to do something simple, something outside. I mean, I, I, I think I'll probably always have at least a, a toe dipped into this stuff because this stuff is really cool, I think. It still is really cool after all the years. Right. Um, I don't think I'll ever fully leave it. It's just a matter of, you know, I can't take this all with me, probably. Right, yeah. That's a lot to lug around. Yeah, yeah that, that lathe was a pain in the butt. Well, cool. Um, so yeah, so you you don't have an a, a set idea, and that's kind of a beautiful thing. But hopefully, you keep making knives and, and really looking to see the B and M B and N. What is it? B and M M N B. Just Moon Bear. So oh, M is in Mary, N is in Nancy, B is in Bob. M and B Moon Bear. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I'll I'll post more about it when I get it. I'll post a bunch of stuff on it. I'm super uh, curious. Yeah. Very curious. Yeah, it'll be cool. Well, I really enjoy this knife very much man and uh that's awesome thank you i had the v1 and the v2 um i liked them both a lot but in the end i didn't want to have just two of the same thing i ended up selling the v2 and and the v1 one the one i had a really i was sitting there forever the v2's got to be better it's got to be better it's <laughs> convincing myself and flipping that and i kept going wait i like this one more <laughs> yeah i mean from a V1 to a V2, I mean, there's not there's not a huge difference. I just didn't want to call it a 1.1 1 .1 just because I didn't feel like it. And I, so I was like, like there was quite a big difference personally. Oh, this one feels more robust and, and built like stronger. That's yeah. what I Well, like. that was actually the point from the beginning. I did want them to be like, like you know, yeah, after I died, I'd hope these would be around still. Like, that's why it's just chunk at the bottom. The V1 and, you know, is robust, but it's not like thick, like crazy thick, but um the two felt lighter and when you did like this with it or something it was a little bit soft and yeah. this says like it just feels like built really well i really like it yeah that's, that's my fair. opinion <laughs> i understand um but then i also know somebody else in our bali song group was like oh v2 all the way he really liked flipping the v2 so and then we just had a different opinion so yeah um um, oh, cool. Anything else you want to add while we're here before we take some questions from our viewers? Um, thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> I was stoked. I was like, oh, sweet. I was hoping one day you'd ask. I would never ask on my own, but I was like, oh, it'd be cool to do one of those interviews someday. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I really have to just like what I'm talking about and be sincere and I yeah. enjoy, you know, um, that or have been watching when I do it on the flippers, it's people I've been watching and learning from and enjoying their content, you know. So that's kind yeah. of the two criteria. So, um, right on, yeah. And just a, I have to feel like it's something I was, and I was really curious what you were up to, so that I knew that would be, a, yeah, I've been pretty quiet. Yeah, you have. I was in, you, you messaged me when I was in Hawaii, I think, and I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. Like, I, 
I really haven't been doing a ton of knife. I've just been, you know, hurry up and wait. So I've just been waiting on the knife parts to come in. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to do it because, uh, you know, it's cool to know your history too. And I didn't even know you were in Portland. I don't think I knew, you know, so kind of cool. I, I enjoy hearing the story of, of, the, of what got people into it. Cause although it might be similar, there is variations of that story that make it unique and cool. And, and, and I, I find that interesting. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really interesting to hear the stories behind people like why they got like his mind was just like on a whim, like, Oh, that's cool. And then it, I never would have thought it would turn into this. I think it's cool that your story is you were pissed at the prices of Bali <laughs> and the drops and not being yeah. able to get one. You know, mm -hmm. machine wise, he had a machine laying around and he knew he wanted to build something and he didn't know what and he started building Bali songs. I love that. You know, yeah. yours is yeah, exactly. similar -ish in the sense of like, well, no, it's not similar at all. But you had a shop and a place to do it, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it is funny. I know. I think back on it, like, had I known, I probably would have just been like, I'll just get it on the next drop. <laughs> Right, right. Well, cool, man. Let's see. Is any questions out there? Anybody want to ask anything? Let's see if I can go back. Uh, let's see. Hey, just want to. Do you are you reading that? Yeah. Oh, Mr. XK Knives. Yeah, his stuff is always really pretty. My God. I've seen a lot of people do stuff. Like, Hammer's stuff is pretty, but I think he's got him beat. Because seeing that, like, what he does with those orcas is that's pretty impressive. I never, when I saw his stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm done finishing. There's, I ain't competing with that. Yeah. That's my XK Knives right there. And yeah, then he also no did my wrap that's in my truck right now. But, yeah. Something I didn't bring up was a lot of times, like, I, people would ask me to rehandle stuff, but I'm like, I don't want to, there's no improving on it. Like I would get a people, a lot of people wanted basilisk rehandles and I'm like, there's nothing for me. I felt like there was nothing to improve on with the bare bones. You know, it's crappy steel handles. So it was really easy to improve on it. But with the basilisk, I'm like, I feel like it would kind of be a slap in the face. And so I was like, I just, I never worked on his stuff. And a lot of times that would happen a lot. Like with reps, I stopped doing them when I saw squiggle stuff. I'm like, I can't beat that. I could do, I could do some cool stuff, but, I, I really liked his, so I was like, mm, maybe I won't do any more reps. I had a squiggle for a, a brief moment and it sold it as quick as I got it. It, it had a weird right. blade on it to me, and I just didn't like it. I don't know. Yeah, but that's, that's fair. my opinion. I like them. I like them real thin. Like I like the the serif. I like. I really like the tsunami man. That was yeah, that was tsunami. up there for me. That was tough. But yeah, I like how just simple it is. Um, my wife had a question. What was your question? She says she doesn't remember. She's in the way earlier. I started typing it and then <laughs> <laughs> she st she it was way earlier. She was on the computer, so she started typing it, but then she didn't finish it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like in the earlier part of our conversation, she was like, "Oh, gotcha." I think. Uh, well, oh well. That's funny. That doesn't normally happen. Where she has a question. <laughs> well, that's fine. It's okay. Now I want to know what your question was of all people. <laughs> where are you are you planning to move, and where are you moving to? Like, um, you're moving. I don't moving. really know. Like, I'm not staying in Oregon. I don't think. I don't think unless someone keeps me here. I'm I'm trying to go far. So I don't know. I might go to Alaska, or I might go to. I don't know. I might go to Hawaii or I might go, you know, I just anywhere, just somewhere. Like I, I have 15 years of, you know, management experience. I'll just go work somewhere. Just do something fun. Like, yeah, go to Alabama apparently is nicer than people think. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to go far. So this stuff, like I said, is probably not coming with me. That's, uh, that's wild. That's exciting. So you got some, uh, wild stuff coming up in the future yeah i think so 
I'm going to go just do whatever. You know, I've always, I've worked for my dad forever. And I've, you know, lived close to my mom, you know, forever. And I, you know, lived, my sister and I bought a house together. And I'm like, I'm going to get away from you people. No, <laughs> they're all really, they're all, they're all really great. I just want to, I just want to go and just do my own thing somewhere. Sure. Get lost somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing wrong with that. Great. Yes, Switzerland, apparently. Um, what's your favorite rehandle you've ever done? It's one of the bare bones I did. Uh, and it was just kind of a, you know, nothing fancy. It was just, it just had a simple channel cut down the middle and then cross cuts. And I don't know, something about it, like it just, it was perfect. And I, that happened a lot where I was like, God damn it, this is sweet. And then I would end up, I, you know, I, I sold it before I built it. Right. So I, I would never get to keep the really cool ones. And there was, a, there was a few like that where I was like, God damn, I wish I could keep this. And I, I never got to keep those. I built one really cool one for myself. And it was on my birthday uh, a couple years ago. But other than that, I think that was the only time I ever got to keep like a really cool one. Um, but there was, there, was, there was a few of those. But this one specific bare bones, just everything worked perfectly. Uh, and then the guy got it and he's like, yeah, it was pretty good. I sold it. You know, no, it wasn't bad. He just didn't like it. What? I mean, um, he didn't hate it. He just wanted something else. He was like me, you know, bought and sold, bought and sold. Um, are we going to see any more PDNs? No, they're all done. They're all done. Yeah, unless I, I, I like to keep the number small because I like to keep it special and manageable. You're like, oh, you got one. Oh, cool. Like, I like, I like to have it be special in some way. Uh, the only way I'd ever do it is kind of like the turbones. If if something, if like if I could do a chain or like I had some breakthrough, something that made it worth doing again. Like if I could get Julian to do a channel run, maybe, but it wouldn't be exactly the same. It wouldn't be the same. Right. Um, and then how many de designs do you have planned for the future? It seems seems like you don't. You just have this next one, then you'll go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, at the moment, I just have the one. Um, it's just the, the M and B that I was going to do next. I was going to do one more so that there would be three knives that were all totally interchangeable, but I'm like, oh, do I want to do a third one? Cause man, it's expensive. It's expensive to do. I mean, a run of knives. What's your like, favorite part of knife making? I love just seeing, I mean, because, like, I've never done the blade part. I only do the handles. Like, I've always had a hard time with the blades. I've tried. No. I just, they've never worked out quite right. So I've always stuck with the handles. I love getting to see the thing almost at completion. Like, when I'm still working on the machines and I'm seeing everything come together. Because it, it feels really good. But there's always that. Like, I feel like I'm cursed where if I'm going to fail, it's on the fourth slab. And it's a, towards the very end. <laughs> That's always when something goes wrong is on the very last handle. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when seeing everything almost done is probably my favorite part. Or when people get it. I love it when people get it and they're like, oh, it's sweet. Or, you know, or heaven forbid something needs to be fixed. I don't like that part. But usually people are pretty cool. XK is giving some props for your turbines work. Oh, thank you, man. Um, thank you very much. Oh, did Turbo he... Zephyr. He loves Zephyr. Oh, yeah. He's Zephyr. Got, there was only one only one Zephyr. That one was really oh, cool, too. Spilt something. Uh oh. I knew I had it, too. Luckily, it wasn't the whole thing. Oh, good. Yeah. Anyway, I got a little excited there, and my elbow knocked the glass off the table, but <laughs> Turbo the Zephyr wasn't full of gold. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, what are your plans? Yeah, man, I super appreciate you uh, you taking the time here. It's it's kind of fun, you know. It's kind of weird at first, but it's fun. I liked it. Cool, awesome. Um, well, all right, man. I appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing more knives from you. And uh, I hope that if you do take a hiatus, it's like you're uh, enjoying that fully. And yeah, thank you very much. And it'll yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll always have a toe in the, in, the, in the pool, you know, I'll always be around. Awesome, yeah, that's, that's good to know for sure.
but yeah, thank you for having me. Somebody's asking, what's your diet like? Uh, in the morning, <laughs> my sister makes my breakfast every morning because she's just that sweet. Uh, I usually eat you know, eggs and toast for breakfast. And then lunch is usually like salad and fruit, a lot of fruit. And then dinner is usually whatever she's making. So it's like chicken or something. I mean, it's not the best, but it's, I, I don't, I, I used to eat a lot of junk food and I don't anymore. And I feel a lot better. Uh, it just took, it took a little while to get there. By junk food, do you mean like highly processed like crap? My yeah, wife. I mean like Oreos and, and cookies and chips and, and Arby's and McDonald's and all that junk. Oh, she's still here. Shell the shell is my sister. Ah, oh, there she is. Okay. Yeah, my wife asked if it was a bunch of processed stuff because my wife cooks really good and is always cooking oh, yeah. with all organic stuff without, you know, the least amount of ingredients possible. Yeah, no, it's nice to eat whole foods. I still eat, I mean, I, I to be fair, I did eat some Oreos before I came down here, but that was just because I was like, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> but yeah. normally we eat really well. Yeah, we can't be perfect. No, we could try. <laughs> Yeah, I I do this thing where I like like I don't go to fa I'm not a fast food guy. The only time I go to fast food is when me and my wife are on a road trip. We go to Taco Bell. Yeah, that's yeah. The last time me and my sister were on a road trip, we went to McDonald's for breakfast. Yeah, we do it just because it's like a thing we started a long time ago. So whenever we take a like, not just like across town, but like a road trip, like yeah, uh, we stop at Taco Bell. Um, but I also try not to eat a lot of fried food. I try not to eat a lot of processed food, but I, I do, you know, I like, like the pizzas and the beer and things. Like yeah. That. It's hard to beat that sometimes. Yeah. I know. Like I go, if I go to Georgia, there was that, like, it's like Brickstone fireplace pizza or something. It was over by the center and it was like the best. I had like a garlic pizza there that was like the best pizza I've ever had. So if I go, I'm definitely eating that. <laughs> It's always nice when you can find a food that actually is actually good for you. Like you have yeah. like some stir fry and you're like, this is the best stir fry in the world. I could have this every night of my life. Yeah, There's a couple of items like that, that I'm like, oh, this is really, really good. Mm -hmm. I know my sister made this salad that was like spinach and bacon and eggs. And it was, oh, so I'm like, I could eat this for every meal forever. Yeah. And then you're sick of it a week later. And then, then you probably wouldn't want to do that. But yeah, it was really good. <laughs> well, cool, man. Um, I super appreciate it. And uh, what is it? Yeah, What's cool. her name? Shell the? Shell the Shell. Yeah, that's yeah. my sister. All right, cool. Well, nice to meet you, sister, as well. And um, uh, all right, man. Uh, I'll keep in touch with you and bug you about trying to get one of your new knives. And uh, we'll see. How yeah, I'll goes. let you know when they're ready. I'll send you one. Oh, man. I would and see you. I'll probably see you at Blade Show. Yeah, yeah, come to the shop so at table and say hi to me because I'll be there most of the time. Hopefully, I'm definitely going to be at the Bali Song meet and be walking around a little bit, but most of my time will probably be at the table because I'm selling yeah, for right. Machine Wise and Cerrone at my table. So I guess I could tell nice. people that too. So yeah, Machine Wise and Cerrone at the shop so at table. You'll see me there. I'm right next to JK and, and Joseph and uh, oh, cool. It's nice that everyone's it's consolidated that, to one spot. Yeah, yeah. We're going to all be in that one spot. So if you get awesome, home, then we'll definitely say hi. Yeah, yeah. If I go, I'll see you. That'll be really cool. Sweet, man. There's Dirty D, too. What's up, Dirty D? What's shaking, man? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're about signing out. So, Dirty D, you're going to have to watch the whole thing from the beginning later. Thank you guys for watching. This is Damn Right I Got Knives signing out. Adios, amigos. Cheers. And I'll catch Thanks, you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Casey. All right.